Hey guys, Rusty, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Cool, hey? Hey guys, Rusty over here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get rank 8 in the Brawler's Duel by beating all the bosses, get your title, and unlock your transmog set in case you want to look like a colossal retard. Now before I get into the guide, I want to mention that normally need a blood soaked invitation to get into the Brawler's Guild, but it seems this time around they didn't add it. Also, uh, down below in the description, I'm going to be leaving timestamps for each individual boss. So, without further ado, let's get started with the guide. Now, the first boss, guys. It's a staple of the Brawler's Guild. It's fucking... Br it's Bruce, dude. Look at him. Bruce the Crocolisk. I love him. Now, Bruce has one mechanic that can actually kill you, which is 99% uh, more mechanics than an LFR. It's called the Chomp, Chomp, Chomp. Now, if he does that, if he's doing Chomp, Chomp, Chomp here, you're going to move here or here, out of the way of Chomp, Chomp, Chomp. Don't stand in front of him. Kill Bruce. All right? Simple boss. Moving on. Now, this boss is the ogre version of bruce it's hammer boy which is actually i'm pretty sure this guy is a quest mob in warlord of draenor um so all you're gonna do all he's gonna do is gonna throw those hammers to the left and right then he's gonna just whip his dick out start doing the fit hammer and start throwing hammers in front of him like he's a fucking hammer bro from mario don't get hit by those all right it's the same thing as bruce he's just gonna throw it directly in front of him don't get hit by it kill him you're done simple moving on to the next boss which is gonna be grandpa grumplefoot now, this is the first boss you might actually die on if you don't know what the fuck to do or don't know what anything does. Basically, he's going to have one thing you want to avoid and one important interrupt cast. So go ahead, pop your DPS cooldowns, pull the boss. That Kanta of Fluting, that cast he did there, that you need to interrupt. If he gets that off, he's going to start channeling and healing. That Song of Flute, guys, I'm going to be honest, I'm assuming it just damaged you. I have no clue what the fuck that does. I'm assuming it just damages you, and if it does, it does like two damage. Ignore it. The other things you want to avoid are going to be those bad lucky dudes. Now, you can kill them off. I don't think they have that much health. They might. If they have a lot of health, ignore them. If they don't, you could kill them off. However, I personally just choose to ignore them. Just You can kill them off. They don't have that much health. Honestly, though, just avoid them. By the way, there's a fluid and cast. You can see it started healing him. Interrupt him. If those bad lucky dudes touch you, they explode, they kill you. Just avoid them. Honestly, I wouldn't bother killing them off. Moving on to the next boss, which is going to be Ash Ketchum. Basically, it's Pokemon Boy. He's basically just going to spam cast I Pick You, which is going to spawn these tiny ass critters here, which are a fucking nuisance to see. This is a bit of a DPS check. Basically, the longer you stay fighting this boss, the more critters that are going to spawn. And if you touch any of these critters, you just basically take a shit ton of damage. If you touch too many of them, you're dead, right? So guys, what you're going to want to do is not touch the critters. There you go. Basically, pop your cooldowns on pull. Again, the longer you're in here, the more critters are spawn, the more shit you gotta avoid. But he doesn't have that much health. Don't touch the critters. Easy boss. Moving on to Blat! Blat! Moving on to Blat. Slime Boy. Now, as soon as he spawns, I actually recommend putting a mark on him, like a skull or a star on him, just so you can keep track of him. He's gonna do a split ability, which is basically just, he's gonna split. He's gonna spawn copies of him, which uh, share health with him. All they do is melee swing at you. You could kite back a little bit. They're very slow. You probably really don't have to that much, and maybe later on. Essentially, you wanna nuke down the main blat that one spawns in the beginning. That's why you wanna mark and basically keep track of which one. Or you could just keep them targeted the entire time. Don't worry about the ads. Completely ignore them. Just focus down blat, and you're done. Simple enough. Again, all the ads do, melee swing you. So just don't get hit. Simple enough, right? Moving on to Philip Carter Tracy. I thought this guy was going to be much harder, but, you know, you know tuning, right? But, all right. So he's going to do murder swipes where he basically just teleports behind you and just starts clawing at you like an animal. It does, like, no damage. Just move away from him. Now, if your DPS is quick enough, you could avoid this where he teleports you to middle, stuns you, spawns two images. They did, like, no damage. I'm pretty sure you just move away from them, though. So, again, if your DPS is good, though, you could completely avoid that. But even if you don't, don't worry about it. I still don't know what it does. It did like no damage. When he gets to about 50% health, he's going to turn to a human. He's going to do blazing bullet. Interrupt that if you're, especially if you're a caster, it silences you for four seconds. He's also going to be taking increased damage during the phase. So if you want, you could save your cooldowns for that. And that's it. Moving on to the next boss, which is going to be Johnny Awesome. Isn't this a guy? Isn't this the guy from Hillsbrad Foothill? I feel like I rem recognize him. Anyways, Johnny Awesome. You're going to have him. You're going to have Dazzle. He's going to do two things until he does his main ability. He's going to shoot. You can't avoid it. Unavoidable damage. There you go. He's just spawning green pools on the ground. Don't stand in those. The pet will just melee you. When he does power shot, you want the pet between you and the boss. You want the power shot to hit the pet. He's going to revive Dazzle and basically take a, I think it's like double damage. I think it's 100%. He'll take extra damage. Just DPS him down. And be honest, that's it. If he revives Dazzle, you just repeat. Not that hard. Although your damage sucks at this point, you're probably not going to kill later bosses. Moving on to the next boss, which is going to be Mama Stormstout. 
Now, I managed to fuck this up a few times because I'm an idiot. So, she's going to do three things. She can do smash turn, ton. I don't know what that is. Basically, just spawn this yellow stuff on the ground. She's going to spawn a wave. Once the wave comes in, you want to stand on the yellow ground and then move off it because it does ticking damage. If you're not on the yellow stuff when the wave comes in, you're going to get frozen and you're going to die. That's it. The smash turn. Smash ton. I think that's how you say that. She's also going to spawn these. There's the wave coming in. I stand on the yellow stuff. Don't get frozen. She's also going to spawn these crocolis, which I, I don't understand why they added this. It's just, it just feels like a random stupid thing they added in. They just melee you. They don't do a lot of damage. They also don't have a lot of health, so you could cleave them down if you want. So again, the most important thing is just stand on the yellow stuff when the wave is coming in. And then perfectly fine. They'll also always come from that side, so stand on the opposite side the waves are coming in. So you don't fucking get insta-frozen. Uh, insta Next one, you got Bear Boy here, who uh, ate his Dwarf Master. He does two things. He does Shotgun Roar, like Bruce, move out of the way of it. Don't get hit by that. He's also going to do Grizzly Leap, where he spawns those red circles on the ground, and you got to dodge them. I'm pretty sure the further you away uh, are from him, the easier it is to dodge. Although, to be honest, even if you're right next to him, you have so much time to move out of the red circles. If you get hit by that, you're probably, you're not, again, you're probably not going to be able to kill later bosses. Easy, don't get hit by Shotgun Roar, don't get hit by the Leap. Next one, we're moving on to Clunk. This guy does one thing, he clunks. He basically has the circle around him after he finishes cast, he does damage around him in that circle. He also does damage in front of him. You get hit by it, you're dead. He'll also, every time he clunks, he he basically sucks you in towards him. And every time he clunks, that suck in gets stronger and stronger. So this is a small DPS check, however, guys, he does not have that much health. I wouldn't even call this a fucking DPS check. Just don't get hit. Just don't stand in front of him and don't stand near him. Basically be at max melee range when you're hitting him. Next boss, we're moving on to Farmer Boy. Now, I actually managed to fuck this up like a complete idiot because there's... So the way this works is there's two types of plants. There's the good plants and the bad plants. Every time he casts a watering can, you want to aim it towards those mounds of dirt there. He'll always cast it to where the way he's facing and always face towards you. So you want the watering can, when he casts it, again, to hit the mounds of dirt. Now it's going to spawn two plants. You can see that that was the good plant. It was the healthy green one. That's going to increase your damage done. Now this one here, you can see it's a little bit rotted and buggy. I didn't realize it. That's going to increase your damage taken. So you want the good plants, not the bad plants. Basically, just keep make sure make sure the watering can keeps hitting those mounds of dirt. Collect the good plants. You can see here that the good ones are nice, healthy, and green. He's gonna do another watering can here. It's gonna hit this mound of dirt. You will be it is very easy to tell, guys. The the ones that are rotted, you, you can see here they're gonna compare right next to each other. You see the healthy green one, and that one right there is rotted. It's all orange, and there's bugs and like dirt, basically pestilence flying around it. Eat the green ones, kill the boss. To be honest though, you could probably ignore the plants and still kill them anyways with decent gear. This boss is a joke. Next one, this fuck this boss. I have always hated this boss in every Brawler's Guild. I'm surprised I put it this early. Uhuru is basically, don't save, don't use your cooldowns and pull, by the way. I'd save them for later on, personally. There's going to be these stars that spawn. If they start glowing bright yellow, you're going to want to run into that, and it's going to spawn these Avenging Angels. When you get them to 50% HP, they're going to target you. They'll always target you, and when they finish their cast, they'll charge where you are. Now, when they do that charge, by the way, you can see, though, there's the yellow star. It's shining yellow. Don't hit the other stars do damage. When they do the charge cast, you want to aim that towards the boss. And every time he gets hit by that, that removes a stack of his divine shield. He has three stacks, so that means you need three of the avenging angels to hit his shields. Again, you can see there over on the right, there's the glowing yellow star that I'm going to go hit. Don't hit the uh, other stars. They do do a lot of damage. Now, what you want to avoid here, which I, again, I managed to fuck this up. Good thing Feral drew a lot of self heals. If you're standing near him, sometimes those stars will start drawing those stars in and they will hit you. Pretty much though, this is the hardest part of the fight is at the beginning. Once you get to Huru, who do Divine Circle, run through one orb as soon as you're unstunned. You don't want to eat all those orbs, you'll you'll just die. Just one through one orb, you'll take some damage, not a big deal. He'll also do one other ability, it's called Complete Heal. Take a guess what that does. It heals him. Interrupt it, you're done. Again, just make sure the charges hit the boss, interrupt Complete Heal, run out of orbs, don't get hit by the stars, you're done. This boss isn't too bad. Next boss, we are moving on to, who the fuck is this? Who is this? Ah, oh, that's right. Blizzard, fix your game. This boss is bugged right now, okay? One of the abilities is bugged. Basically, you got a small dick worm. DPS him down. The big worm will spawn. He'll spawn these purple poops on the ground. Don't stand on the purple poop, okay? It slows you. It does ticking damage. Don't fucking stand in that. Simple enough. Now, he's also going to do this dark outpour cast. Which spawns a beam. It's just going to go in a big circle. You see here, this is where the bug comes in. The animation stops. However, he still does the beam in a circle. So, if you stand still, you're dead. All right? So basically, you just want to keep moving in a circle, just, even if the animation stops. Hopefully, that fixes it by the time you do this. Also, while he's doing that beam, he does pulsing damage around him, so don't stand near him. Just kite. 
The other ability does is that blast. Basically, he'll look at you. He'll send the beam in your direction. Just don't don't get hit, guys. Come on, seriously. Again, if the bug is still there, just keep running in a circle. Don't worry about it. Next boss. I'm not going to pronounce that. He does firewall and pyroblast. The firewall, basically, is going to spawn a firewall with a gap in a certain area. You need to run through that gap, not get by the firewall. Save all your interrupts for the pyroblast cast. That will pretty much one-shot you if that goes off. Don't worry about fireball. It does next to no damage. You need to save your interrupts for pyroblast. That's it. Only two things you need to worry about. Firewall, pyroblast. Simple enough, right? Next one. Fuck this boss, by the way. Spy Master. A lot of memory comes into this one. Essentially, he's going to spawn these items around the room. He's going to give you hints of what you need to stand next to. So for this one, to say, I spy a delicious bounty. You can see it on the top left. That's the bounty. It's the feast. He's going to, he's hinting towards that. If you go to know it's the correct one, there'll be a circle around the little light coming from it. He'll also do Master Stroke, which knocks you back, by the way, which you can get knocked out of. Don't get hit by that. If you're not standing in that, you'll get exploded. If you're full health, you can't, and use a defensive cooldown, you can actually survive that explosion once. Otherwise, normally with these with crap gear, you're probably just gonna get one shot. Again, I almost got knocked out of there. Now, eventually, what he's gonna do, you, you wanna try and memorize all the location of the items and try and learn all the hints. That's the idea of this. Good luck doing that, because eventually he's gonna reduce your vision to where you can't see shit. What I recommend doing here is first kill him before he even does this. Second of all, just start fucking running or save all your speed increases. Just run around like a madman. Try and find the item that he's saying to go to. Again, it'll always light up with a circle around it. Again, just run around like a madman. Find the correct item that he's hinting at or memorize them. Good luck with that one. Next, we're moving on to the Dwarven Council, I think. Wild Hammer. I don't know what the fuck. They're, they're the three dwarves, okay? They each do an ability. You have the guy that does Lava Burst. Interrupt them as much as possible. I get lazy with that. You have the guy that does a Whirlwind. Nothing you can do about that. Just damage. You have pools on the ground. Don't stand in it. Now, the most important part is going to be the guy that does the Lightning Crash. Once he finishes cast, he's going to leap on your location. However, as he's finishing it, just, just move. Just move and you'll avoid him. If you get hit by that, it's still not that big of a deal. You just get stunned for a few seconds and take some damage. The damage here is not that bad. They also share health here. So multi-dotters, cleavers, AOE them down. Again, share health, nuke them down. Just don't stand in the shit. Avoid the lightning crash. Interrupt as much as possible. Although I get fucking, I barely interrupt and I still did it because I'm a lazy piece of shit. This boss, joke. Moving on. I love this boss. Meatball, dude. I don't know why. It's something about doing a lot of damage is fun. So, simple enough, all Meatball's gonna do is he's gonna spawn these purple pools on, or pools, circles. Purple stuff. We'll call it purple stuff. We'll go with that. He's gonna spawn the purple stuff on the ground. Go ahead, just keep running into them. That's gonna increase your damage done. Just r keep running into them, do damage, until you get to a certain point where he just fucking melts. Just don't let your stacks drop, and you'll just passively kill the boss. Simple enough. Next boss, we're moving on to, I'm not pronouncing, Millie White. Sure, we go for it. Millie White. He's gonna do a beam cast there, which is the Photoplasm Buster Cannon. I don't know. That thing there. It's just unavoidable damage. You can't avoid it. He's also going to do electric dynamite. Uh, don't interrupt that. You need those dynamite pools later on. Technically, you only need one, so I guess you could interrupt the other ones, but they will eventually despawn. Once he does that discombobulator cast, you want to hop into a lightning pool. If you don't, you're going to get turned into a chicken and you're dead. If you're in the lightning pool, though, that'll prevent you from becoming a chicken. There you go. So, just stand in the pools when he does a discombobulator, and it'll be perfectly fine. Simple enough, right? Next one, moving on to Tide Mistress. Now, what's going to happen is you pull the boss, you're going to have a Tortolan and his son there. You can see over on the left. Yeah, that's your left. Don't let him die. He's a suicidal fuck. He's trying to kill himself, okay? You need to prevent him from dying. How do you do that? Watch, he's going to he's gonna be like, oh, shiny fire. I know, I'll go fucking touch it. By the way, you can interrupt her frost bolt. Try and interrupt her puffer fish cast or her fire cast. If he starts running towards an object, you could pick him up. And basically move him away from it. That's the idea. If he touches any of those, he gets hurt. And Papa gets really angry. And Papa gets really angry. Well, uh, he starts mailing you and he does a shit ton of damage. Which you see here as I fuck it up. Um, I'm pretty... You might be able to carry him the entire time. However, if you get hit by a mechanic, I believe he gets hurt along with you. Therefore, you fucked up. Now, again... I have no clue where to drop him here. I kind of have no clue what I'm doing. I managed to fuck up. The Tortolan gets angry. You can see here he's doing a shit ton of damage. Luckily, however, the boss was low. So essentially, just try and keep the little turtle alive as long as he possibly can and nuke the boss down. It's really not that hard. Now, for this boss, you're going to have four things in the cor each corner. Now, the first one you want to nuke down immediately. What each of these do, they'll do a stacking dot on you that gives you a stacking debuff. However... Once you move to them, they'll turn into the statue, which allows the- it's only a two-second debuff, right? It allows the debuff to fall off, therefore decreasing the damage you take, because the debuff increases the damage you take per stack. So all you have to do, just move to each statue, it'll drop your stacks if you're taking too much damage. 
However, guys, I'm going to be honest, with a good amount of gear, you could probably just nuke down every single one without resetting your stacks. These did not have a lot of health. They didn't do a lot of damage. The first one you could easily nuke down, right? But if you can't, you're struggling with it, just go to each one, drop your stacks, it's perfectly fine. Once all the statues are dead, you're done. The main boss, Megas Dig, is here. He, take, he, he does nothing. By the way, he's also immune until you kill all the statues, so you can't just nuke him down. Next, fuck, fuck this boss. Actually, he's pretty easy right now just because the tuning is off, but in the past, fuck this boss. Now, what he's going to do, he's basically going to spawn this purple... Purple. Yeah, I don't know my colors. Maybe I'm fucking colorblind. He's going to spawn this green poison on the ground. He's also going to spit poison in random areas. If he stands in this poison for even just a second, so you need to kite him, he's going to gain a stacking buff, which increases his size, I believe his health too, and also his damage. So essentially, the more stacks he gets, you're basically going to fuck yourself. If you're a get up to five or more stacks, you're probably just fucked. Even one stack, even one stack is kind of difficult. Essentially, guys, this really isn't that hard. Just keep backpedaling backwards. Keep kiting him. It's not that hard. You want to kite him around the edges to try and save as much room as possible. Sometimes pools can spawn in your way there. Priority, don't drag him through the pools. It sucks. You lose some room. You just got to get around it. His boss really isn't that bad, though. Just don't let him sit in the poison, and you'll be perfectly fine. Learn how to kite, kid. Stitches. This boss is easier than fucking Bruce. Maybe. Not really. So, he basically, he's going to have green shit around him, then it gets a stacking dot. If that increases, gets to 10 stacks, you instantly die. If you run out of it, it drops all your stacks. He pulls you back in and gives you another debuff for two minutes, which stacks, increases your movement speed by 10% each time. Or decreases, sorry. So eventually you get slower and slower to run out to the point where you eventually just die. However, the boss has like no health. I probably could have just, I probably didn't have to run out at all and I could have killed him. So basically, if you're going to reach 10 stacks, just run out and it'll be fine. So this motherfucker is a stripping contest. He's going to try and steal your clothes. You want to steal his clothes. He does two casts, strip storm, and he also does disrobing strike. Save all your interrupts, all your stuns for disrobing strike. You're not going to be able to interrupt every single one. So save your stuns for the ones you don't have your interrupt for. If he gets that off, he takes a piece of your gear off, therefore in decreasing your damage and also decreasing your health. It's the same thing if you run into the tornadoes. Now, what you're going to want to do, you can also drag him through the tornadoes and that will remove his clothes. Once all his clothes are removed, he'll start running away like a little bitch boy and take 1000% increased damage. So again, your priority here is do not let him cast that disrobing strike as much as he possibly can. You see here, all his clothes are off. He's taking increased damage. He'll start running away. He'll still cast a strip storm and also the disrobing strike, but he's also taking 1,000% increased damage. So save your cooldowns for this point. Once all his clothes are off, nuke him down. Again, name of the game here, disrobe him as quickly as you possibly can and interrupt disrobing strike as much as you can. Simple enough. Now we're moving on to Mecha Bruce, which is his, I guess his brother. Sure, why not? Now, just like Bruce, he'll do chomp, chomp, chomp. However, he'll also do better, stronger, faster. Every time he does this, it increases his cast speed and movement speed. Once he does it, though, after he's finished that cast, he'll do a stasis beam cast after the better, stronger, faster cast. Move away from him right before he finishes the better, stronger, faster cast, as he has to move to you before he does chomp, 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 giving time to stun the drop off so you can move away from chomp, chomp, chomp. So again, you can see here in a second after he does the second chomp, 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 I'm going to move away from him. Wait for it, 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 wait, wait, wait. Better, stronger, faster. You can move out the last second depending how fast you can move. I move as far away as try and tank him in a corner. He does stasis beam. If I was right next to him, he would do chomp, 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 and I would be fucked. However, since he had to get the travel time to get over there, it gave me, again, here's he's super buffed here. It gave me, it gives me enough time to move out of the chomp, chomp, chomp and kill the boss. This really isn't that hard. Again, tank him in a corner, move away from him after better, faster, stronger. Simple. Fuck the seagulls. I hate you, Blizzard. Why you gotta put seagulls in the game? Now, what this boss is gonna do, he's gonna do Mecha Treagle, which spawns a laser tree on the ground. If you get hit by those lasers, you're gonna get a nasty fucking dot on you. Also, he does Blinding Peck, which disorients you. It can be dodged. You can get disoriented into the lasers, which fucking sucks. There's nothing you can do about it. If it happens, you're gonna have to use a defensive cooldown. That's all I can say. Like that voice crack, by the way. Paul is also going to spawn two ads. Mecha Beagles, don't DPS the Beagles. They're just going to fixate you and try and hit you. Don't stand in them. It's simple enough you can avoid them. The other ads are going to spawn are going to be the little tiny seagulls. They do actually do a good amount of melee damage to you. However, they're not worth switching to and single targeting down. You want to passively cleave down those Mecha Weagles. Again, just their melee damage is up there. This boss is a DPS check. He will gain a stacking buff. Save all your cooldowns. I recommend potting and even using Lust for this. If I had to do it again, I would do it. This boss is kind of a big DPS check. Basically, don't get hit by the lasers. Cleave down the adds. Kill the boss before he kills you. 
Moving on. Moving on to I, um, the boys. We're just calling them the boys. You have the big boy and the small boy. The goblin. Now, they're going to do a few things. They're going to get rooted. Just be a druid head. Head. Whatever. Get out of the root. There's nothing to do about it. Once the mine spawn there, you can see there, don't move for a second. Look for the opening. Run through the opening. Now, the goblin's also going to do a throw dynamite cast, which he does. It's really just like the door before. Just move before he finishes the cast. Otherwise, if you get hit like I did there, like a complete ape, you take a lot of damage. Again, as long as you, by the way, if you have nothing to get out of roots, sometimes you're just going to get rooted into a dynamite. Save a defensive for that or use something to get a root. Now, I chose to kill the big guy before the goblin here. And what this caused the small goblin to do is basically just spam throw dynamite. Now, I have no clue what happens if you kill the goblin first. I don't know if it's easier for casters to kill the goblin first. I, I don't know, guys. I'm sorry. Find out. Let me know. But it's simple, guys. If you're melee, this is no problem. Even for most casters, I'm sure you have some instant abilities. Just dodge the throw dynamites and kill the boss. And you're done. Really isn't that bad. Next one, we're moving on to the pirate boy. I love this boss. Kind of. I hated him last season because I, I sucked him. Anyways, what you're going to want to do, drag the boss to the back of the cannons. By the way, so the... Let me restart. The way this works is the gunpowder just go to the cannon. And once it reaches the cannon, it fires a cannonball at you. That cannonball hits you, you explode, and you die. Horribly. So what are you going to do? Don't stand in front of the cannons when the gunpowder is about to reach. Basically, once a cannon fires here, I'm going to move to the left or the right. Once a cannon fires, you want to move to that cannon. And that will prevent you from getting hit. Basically, you need to pay attention. If you're near in front of a cannon that's about to get, you know, the gunpowder is about to reach it and fire the cannonball, don't be there. You will die instantly. Okay? Don't get hit. Now, we're moving on to the final boss here. This boss is a significant gear check. He, You need a lot of damage. You need a good amount of self heals. So as soon as it starts, DPS the monkey boy, <clears throat> Hudson, his barrier projector. The other bosses will take no damage while that's up. After that, you need to switch to, what's his name there? Fucking Dupree? Ah, I get it. Dupree McCree. He's going to cast High Noon. If that cast gets off, you're one shot. You're dead. Goodbye. You need to pop your cooldowns, nuke that boss off immediately. However, at the same time, since this boss, they do have a lot of health, they have a bit of a DPS check, you want to try and cleave the other bosses as much as possible. Now, I made a small mistake here. Once uh, the pre is dead, I decided to switch to the small gnome boy. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce his name, the gnome, the other guy. That's a mistake. You want to switch to Hudson first. What he, he does two abilities, Hudson, besides his first barrier. He does the Tesla cannon, interrupt it. That doesn't do map that much as long as you interrupt it. He also does jump pack, you can see there. That's where you're taking most of the damage in this fight. You can stun it to avoid it, however, other than that, there's no way to avoid it. You're going to take a ton of damage from it. You need a good amount of self-sustain here. Again, I recommend, not even recommend, you really should kill Hudson first. It's possible to do it. I mean, I do it here where I kill a goblin boy. But you need to kill Hudson first, guys. I, otherwise, you're just dead. You need a good amount of self-sustain here. By the way, the only other things uh, the goblin does, he puts swirlies on the ground, don't get hit. He does a maniacal laugh where I believe he just teleports and jumps. That's it. That's it. As long as you don't hit enrage here, I almost did. Kill the monkey, and you're fine. Simple enough. And that's it, guys. That's the brawler's yield. By the way, the transmog sucks, as you can tell by the beginning of the video. I don't like it. However, this brawler's guild, uh, much easier than the legion one. Legion 1, actually, I needed a lot more gear before I was able to do it. This time, it was um, kind of a fucking joke. Which, to be honest, I don't mind. I'd rather be more of a mechanical check than a gear check. And that's it, guys. I hope this helped you. Thank you very much for watching. I love you.